Today, I'm going to be making a recipe that is at least 1,500 years old, maybe older. Good news, we've already had some form of this ancient food, kind of. I'm speaking of the great and delicious Esikia amantata, which loosely translates into minced meat and coal fat. But before we continue on, let's have a quick chat. A one-on-one. -on -one. You clicked on this video, I started speaking. I showed you my call fat. How about a like? And if you think this might be getting serious, I think so. Let's go with a subscribe. I think we can move to that next level, right? It's just a button. The Romans are well known for their many innovations during their reign. They built a Colosseum, created a calendar, crafted one of the first sewer systems, and made complex roads, and an alphabet we borrowed from. But let's focus on one of their more important innovations, the burger. A Roman burger. You know, Esikia omentata, minced meat, and cow fat. Now, we'll be making a few changes here, but the Romans won't know. They're long gone. Of course, if you were to hop in your DeLorean, rev up to 88 miles per hour, and head back to their time to ask for this Roman burger, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. Also, they wouldn't understand your English, but you get the point. The term burger is actually fairly modern. As the story goes, German immigrants came to the U.S. to open restaurants during the 19th century. One of those menu items was a hamburger steak. The hamburger steak eventually made its way out to factory workers who, well, didn't want to fork and knife it. So they put it between two pieces of bread and thus, the hamburger sandwich. Flash forward to modern times, we have what we all know as the hamburger, or a burger. All right, enough of that history stuff. Let's get to making our Roman burger. So of course a hamburger usually consists of a bun, cheese, ground beef, onion, lettuce, tomatoes. We're not going to use any of that. Nope, it's all going away. Yes, even the cheese. I know, what's a burger without cheese? It's not a burger, or is it? Okay, so full disclosure, this is not one of those cooking videos where I perfected this recipe. This is my first time doing this, so we'll see what happens. All right, the classic recipe involves minced meat, beef, or pork. We have beef. Cow fat, which is pork based, bread soaked in white wine, hmm, okay, fresh ground pepper, liquamen, aka fish sauce, kara anum, more on that later. I'm not really a fan of putting pine nuts in my burger, but let's go with it. At first, I was a bit perplexed by this whole soaked bread and wine part. Like, was it like a whole French dip type thing? I hope not, because that sounded kind of gross. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love bread. I love white wine, but together? So we are going to remove the crust of the bread and soak it in some white wine. I did that for an older piece of bread. If you don't have that, just put it in the oven on low for about 10 to 15 minutes and you should be good. Fast forward. All right, let's add the inside of the bread, add some white wine and set aside for now. Time for the mincing of the meat. I'm using chuck roast, which is classically used for burgers. Well, I guess we could actually mince this meat by cutting it. We could also just grind our own. Or you could just buy ground beef from the get-go. I have to admit, this part's fun. Okay, time for the pine nuts. I'm going to grind these in a mortar and pestle, mostly because it feels like it's the right tool to use for this recipe. And I'm trying to impress you. We're going to add a half teaspoon of black pepper and a half teaspoon of liquamen. So liquamen was a salty fish sauce that the Romans used, which I'm not sure most grocery stores will carry. However, you will usually find an Asian fish sauce in most, and it's actually been a trend to add this to your burger lately. Now before we start thinking, I don't really want to add a fish sauce to my American cheeseburger. Hold on. This will add umami. And we're not making an American cheeseburger. We could probably talk about umami for quite a bit, but basically it has a lot of depth, savory flavor, the fifth taste. Let's grab our wine-soaked bread, give it a little squeeze, and add. Side note, I'm glad we didn't record the audio here because squeezing that bread sounded, well, weird. Give the whole thing a light toss. Yes, I'm using a burger patty shaper. I like it, makes my patties perfectly round. Don't judge. Now, I gotta be honest, this is shaping up a little bit like a meatball, which I'm not too excited about, but when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Did. 
do. Cut fat is a fatty membrane from the digestive organs and is typically used to wrap up other foods like sausages. For most people, this would be either super cool or super gross. I'm team super cool gross. Yum. You do need to soak the cough fat in a bowl of lukewarm water before trying to work with it. Surprisingly, I was able to find cough fat at my local butcher shop. It came frozen in this two pound-ish bag. Uh, it doesn't really smell like anything at first, but as it comes up to temperature, it kind of reminded me of biology class experiments. Okay, let's wrap these burgers. Obviously you can see the web of fat, but in between those webs is an even smaller layer of fat. It cuts pretty easy, wraps and sticks to itself. Oops, gotta fix that. We're on camera. And there it is, a burger wrapped in call fat. It's certainly a, it's certainly a look. And fast forward. Add some salt, add some pepper, and we're good. And now that I think about it, these might be perfect for Halloween. As mentioned before, some recipes mention cooking this in kara enum, which is basically fresh grapes that have been mashed for their juice. Then reduced and then ready to be cooked in. But since we promised more of a burger, we're going to deviate. Now while the Romans probably cooked this on an open fire, we're just gonna opt for the grill. So light it up. Dishes break. So one thing to note about this call fat is that it doesn't render away. It cooks, but it's still there. Whoa, you can like, see here how the underside just kind of curled up a little bit. All right, we're gonna add some bread to this dish, but to keep it somewhat Roman-ish, we're gonna use some ciabatta bread. This is it, taste test time. It's good. It, it kind of reminds me like it's a mix of pork fat and a hamburger, like almost like the, it's got a lot of bacon fat flavor. <clears throat> I feel like the pine nuts mixed in the burger isn't an appetizing look because it's like these little round white specks inside, which isn't appetizing for meat maybe, so maybe that's not good. So historically, the call fat was used to kind of hold together the meat, and it definitely did that. Um, it certainly added a lot more flavor. I can see why they did this. I can see why they used it. Roman burger. Thanks for watching Believe It or Not Bites, where we sizzle the strange, cook up the curious, and explore Epicurean oddities. Tune in again, grab a glass of Circus Born Lemonade paired with a 1,500 year old Roman hamburger, and you've got yourself a meal and a story for the dinner table. Until next time, believe it or not.